All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back. This is going to be our first PrinterBot Plus assembly video. In the last video, we actually went through the process of tinting the laser cut pieces. This is not a necessary step, but if it's something you want to do, you definitely want to do it at this stage and not later on when you have to disassemble everything. All right, so as mentioned in many places on PrinterBot Talk, in the forums, as well as the wiki, we are going to go ahead and take care of the motor shafts first. It's been suggested that the X, Y, and E, that's the extruder motors, have their shafts flattened so that the set screws do not become a problem later on where they loosen up or the set screws can actually get stuck on the shafts and you can never get the motor off again. So it's two different problems that this solves. Once again, you do not, it has been suggested, do not do the Z motors. That's the two motors that are slightly smaller and are wired together. The reason why is they have couplers that are different and do not use a set screw, at least in the current version of the printer bot. So the suggested approach is to take the motors and again, this is either the X, the Y, or the E, one of the larger motors. Use a zip type bag, get everything in there, and then poke a hole through the other end just big enough to slide the end of that, that shaft through. Basically, we're trying to protect the motor from getting any sort of metal filings inside it or around it, which could cause problems later. So seal it up. Want to definitely get most of the air out and get that last little, little bit there. And so now we have essentially this. And then it's also been suggested to kind of add some extra precaution just recycling some printer paper here and then adding some more protection by just punching a little hole through that. So not only do we have the Ziploc encasing it, but we also have this paper kind of shield going around it and fully protecting the motor while we're doing the filing. And so the one that I've already got set up here using a really heavy vise is already clamped in place, just barely touching the tip of the shaft there. Again, you don't want to over tighten it because you could mess up the shaft, you could bend it, you could cause all kinds of problems. So really just need to find the right amount of torque on there to keep it in place while you're filing, but not so much that you're crushing the life out of your stepper. So again, I've got it in this vise. I've also got just a little something underneath to hold the other side from flopping up and down as we go. And make sure that we got it nice and tight. And so what we're gonna do is take a flat file and go in one direction across the shaft. We're not gonna go back and forth, but we're just gonna go across the shaft, lift it up, Cross the shaft, lift it up. Again, making sure the shaft is not turning. If it's turning, then you don't have things tight enough on your vise or some other issue and you need to figure out a new way to, to mount things. There are other ways of approaching this if you don't have a vise. However, I find that this is probably the most likely to work best, just given that it's nice and heavy, it's gonna hold everything in place. And you don't need a, a second person to help you out when doing this. It's also been suggested that you can file different parts of the shaft, the, the front end, the back end, depending on where the actual attached pulley or what have you is going to be located. But the other theory is that you can just do the whole shaft and then not have to worry about it. So that's the approach that I'm going to take and just do as much of the shaft as I can. And on all three of these motors, then I won't have to worry about it later on when I'm actually doing the assembly. So even though we're not starting with the motors necessarily as the very first part of the assembly process, if we can get this bit of manual work out of the way, then we won't have to worry about it later on when we actually get to the parts that need specific motors.
So since my file is not wide enough to completely cover the entire exposed shaft, I'm sort of going back and forth across it so I get an even layer. And again, I'm not seesawing it. I'm going across, lifting up, going across, lifting up, going across, lifting up. So even though it may look like I'm going back and forth, I'm not. I should probably mention that you uh, really do need your uh, safety goggles just for uh, metal reasons. If you ever wondered why they ask you about doing metal work when you get an MRI, this is why. So you don't want to have to deal with that. I'm not going to do all three of these on the video. I'm just going to show you how to do one of these. And as you go along, you may need to kind of get the crud out of your file. So in this case, I'm just using an old toothbrush that I use for a lot of this sort of thing. When you get that crud in there, it definitely reduces the efficiency of your cuts. Definitely could be a workout for your arms. Of course, you want to check every now and then to see how much you flatten, because you don't want to go too much or too little, but you definitely want to get that flat on there so that the set screw has something to engage. So it looks like we'll continue going a little bit more. And as the wiki mentions, you definitely want this flat for the whole point because if you sort of just rough it up and don't actually get a flat on there, you may actually have more problems than had you not done it in the first place. So try your best to actually get a even flat across the shaft. As you can tell, probably using a larger file would, would be helpful. This is the only one I had really on hand, so making do with what I have. So this is one that has not been flatted yet. So just perfectly cylindrical. Uh, this is the one that we have just added the, the flat to. And as you can see, it has a sort of notched surface in there so that when the set screw actually comes through, it has something that it can engage that's flat instead of being a slippery cylindrical surface, uh, it can actually engage with this flat part 
here. So that's kind of the, the whole point of, of doing this. So I'm gonna do this with all three of the motors. So again, take this one, repeat the process, and then finally with the third motor. And remember not to do it with these that are wired together. These are for the Z-axis. They do not need to be flattened because they have a different type of coupler without a set screw. So I'm gonna continue doing the flattening process and I'll be back when it's time to do the next part of the assembly process.